Hello and welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to discuss practical questions on support and movement. Now this is part two. If you haven't watched part one, be sure to do so. I'll link it in the description box. Let's start. The photos provided for this question are of bones P and S from the same mammal. P1 and P2 are photos of the same bone but from different views. Study the photographs and answer the questions that follow. Now just a reminder, if you would like to try out the questions for yourselves, then just pause the video, go through them and then continue watching to find out whether your discussion or your answers are correct. Best of luck. Okay, so we have three photographs but of only two bones. So photograph P1 and P2 are of the same bone but from different views. Now we also have another bone that is labeled as S. So let's look at the question. Part A. Identify the bones in the photos. Give a reason for each of your answers. So we are supposed to identify bone P and bone S. Now whenever you have vertebrae and you're supposed to identify which vertebra it is, then the first thing you're supposed to ask yourself is this. Which type of vertebra is this? Now there are five types according to the region where they're located. We have cervical vertebrae. These are found in the neck region. Thoracic, chest region, lumbar in the lower back, and then we have the sacral and the caudal. Now the good thing is you can never confuse sacral vertebrae and caudal vertebrae with any other. Now ask me why. Now when you talk about sacral vertebrae in humans, there are five bones, there are five vertebrae. But you find that all the sacral vertebrae are fused, they are joined together to form one rigid structure which is called the sacrum. There it is. So the reason why they are fused together is so as to make this structure or the sacrum strong so that it can bear the weight of the body and spread it to the legs through the pelvic girdle. So whenever you see a structure that looks like this, this is the sacrum that consists of the sacral vertebrae. Now on to the caudal vertebrae. These also have a unique look. Now we have four caudal vertebrae in humans. Now these again are also fused to form one structure. This is called the coccyx. There it is. So whenever you see this, you know that this consists of the caudal vertebrae that are fused together. So if you look at the bones that we have in the above photographs, they cannot be the sacral or caudal vertebrae. So that means that Either they are the cervical, lumbar or thoracic vertebra. Now let us start. Now if you look at the two bones that we have in the photographs, you'll note that both bone P and S share one distinctive feature. And that is the presence of the vertebratarial canals. Now vertebratarial canals are openings that are found on either side of the bone. These are only present in cervical vertebrae. Now these allow passage for the vertebral artery. Now there we have the, uh, the canals. So this is a distinctive feature of cervical vertebrae. Whenever you see a bone having this feature, then you should know automatically that this is a cervical vertebra. So that means that whatever bones we have over here are the cervical vertebra. Now cervical vertebrae are seven in number. Now the first two have unique features. Then the remaining fi five, share certain characteristics in common with the others. Now the first two cervical vertebrae are called the atlas and the axis. Now the first one, the atlas, has a look that is exactly similar to bone P. So that makes bone P the atlas. Now at the base of the skull, there are two rounded projections. These are called the occipital condyles. Now the occipital condyles of the skull articulate with the atlas bone. Now these two form a joint that allows the nodding of the head. So just a reminder, when we talk about articulating, we're simply talking about a connection that is formed between two or more bones. Now coming back to our reason, remember we're supposed to give a reason as to why bone P is the atlas. Now the reason is that it has broad facets for articulation with the occipital condyles. Moving on to bone S. This is a cervical vertebra. And remember, when naming, always use a singular term if it's a single bone. So never talk about vertebrae if you're referring to one bone. So this is the cervical vertebra. 
Now the reason is because it has vertebratorial canals for the passage of the vertebral artery. Moving on to part B, name the parts labeled A, B, and C. So part A, this is the transverse process. Now the transverse process provides a surface area, a large surface area for the attachment of muscles. Remember, one of the most important functions of the skeleton is to provide a surface for attachment of muscles which are necessary for movement. B, this is a vertebratorial canal. And lastly, part C, this is the neural canal. Now, when we talk about the neural canal, this is simply a passage. It allows for the passage of the spinal cord. Now, one thing you'll note that is cervical vertebrae tend to have a wide neural canal. And the reason for this is the spinal cord is widest at the neck region. So it's wide to accommodate the large spinal cord. The last question identify one similarity and one difference between bones P and S. Now, one similarity is that they both have large neural canals and they also have broad transverse processes. Now, on to the differences. Number one is with regards to the transverse processes. Even though they both have them, you'll find that those of the atlas are wing-like. Now, those of the cervical vertebra are branched. Now, again, this is another characteristic of cervical vertebrae. They have branched transverse processes. Back to the neural spine. That of bone P is reduced while that of bone S is prominent. That is, it's wide. Centrum. That of bone P is much reduced while bone S has a large and broad centrum. And that is that. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. I hope it's managed to clear up a few things with regards to the vertebrae. See you next time.